I've always been interested in trying to control the pitch on a pocket operator. It's controlled with a trim pot, but it makes it tricky to play a melody. I'd seen a few demos of this from folks, but wanted to try it with a DAC. I started by measuring the voltage for each note on the trim pot. I made a spreadsheet, which then became an array in some CircuitPython code. I sent the voltages from the DAC to the ADC line on the trim pot, and it was changing the notes. I added in some buttons from this old project. When I pressed a button, the corresponding note voltage was sent to the ADC. However, to then get the sound to play from the pocket operator, I still had to press the button. So we're talking about two button presses for one note. Not very efficient. I realized I'd need to solder to the buttons on the pocket operator, but that felt like a lot for a Sunday afternoon in August. So I called the experiment of success and moved on. Fast forward to February. Teenage Engineering announced that in honor of the 10 year anniversary of the pocket operator, they're holding a pocket operator hacking contest. I don't have any desire or delusions of contest fame, but it was a nice idea to revisit the pitch control in honor of the 10 year anniversary. I knew that for any of this to work, I'd want to power the pocket operator directly from the microcontroller so everything was on the same power supply. There are broken out pads on the back of the PO, two of which are three volt and ground. I attached three volts and ground from the board and was able to get the pocket operator to boot. So that was a step locked in. Now the fun part. I started by reassembling the original DAC output to the trim pot from August. Once I got that working, I started poking at the buttons, literally poking with bits of wire. Uh, there are quite a few hacks out there where folks connect arcade buttons to the PO button pads, but it still requires physical contact to close the switch. The button needs to be tied to ground. So I needed a way to digitally press the switch when a GPIO pin was toggled. And to do this, I grabbed a MOSFET and a resistor and put together a little circuit that would act as a digital button. I connected the output to the button pad and it was triggering the switch. This was great news, but I was starting to realize that this wasn't going to be a simple GPIO to button pad wiring. Each button would need this MOSFET resistor circuit. So I consulted with my cats and they agreed that the only answer to get further with this was to design a PCB as long as I used my laptop so that we could sit on the couch together. After a few hours, I had this. I made the PCB the same dimensions as the pocket operator. I kept everything through hole because I've been burned by SMD MOSFETs before. So when I originally did the pinout, I was thinking that on the service mount chip, if we think of it like a triangle, that it was gate, drain, source. It is not. Uh, the pinout is actually gate, drain, source. Uh, so, uh, the pinout on a through hole, this one at least is gate drain source. So we're going to be wiring it up like so. And this is supposed to be fun. Added in some headers for the DAC breakout and a KB2040 microcontroller. And of course, I added an LED. You always, always include an LED on your PCB. I went pretty hard on the PCB art. I may have spent more time on the silk screen than the circuits. Uh, I used the DXF of the pocket operator from Teenage Engineering for part of the back art. And then I sent them off to Fab and Friday they arrived at my door. I was so, so happy with how the silk screen came out. I only hoped that they worked as nicely as they looked. I used short headers for the KB2040 and the DAC to try to keep everything low profile. And then next I soldered up one of the MOSFET circuits and confirmed that was working. This was a huge victory because I had worried and triple checked the pin out of the MOSFET. So knowing that I had gotten it right was excellent. I went on to solder the rest of them up. I used a cat LED that I had been waiting to use. It's a slow change RGB LED. So, you know, if you're toggling it on quickly, it's just a simple red LED, but if you keep it powered on, it will slowly cycle through all the colors. It was time to test and it wasn't really working that great. This ended up being a connection uh, issue with the button pads. I was actually shorting some of the pads to the button bodies. So that made everything grounded because uh, you know these are tiny little pads and I don't think Teenage Engineering really designed them to be soldered to, but you know, here we go. Uh, but I eventually got them sorted out. I checked continuity for each one, one by one and fixed as I went. And then they were basically all working until button six and seven. 
they just weren't working, even when continuity was coming up okay. On top of that, if they were connected during boot, pocket operator would hang, it wouldn't fully boot. I would have to disconnect the wire to the button input for it to boot. I tried adding additional pull-up resistors and in line, and this fixed button seven, but it did not fix button six. I tried a bunch of stuff, different resistor values, different MOSFETs, I just, everything I could think of. I even started looking at the data sheet for the pocket operator's microcontroller to see, you know, maybe the GPIO that's connected to it's something special or something, but eventually I just, I stepped back and I took a moment to look at the bigger picture. I had 15 out of 16 buttons working. This is a hack. There are probably internal pull-ups or other things specific to the pocket operator microcontroller being affected here. I should just accept that button six isn't going to work right now and just focus more on the fact that 15 synth voices are working. So now with proof that therapy and mindfulness work, I started writing some CircuitPython code for these 15 buttons. The KB2040 is acting as a MIDI input device. The same voltages are being sent by the I2C DAC when a matching MIDI number is received. MIDI note on triggers the GPIO, which sends the signal through the MOSFET. I assigned a different MIDI channel to each synth voice. I considered using an encoder or having a menu system, even it left a little gap on the PCB for it and mounting, but MIDI channels ended up being a very simple solution. I found that I had to toggle each GPIO to get the pocket operator to fully boot. Again, chalk it up to soldering a bunch of wires from one microcontroller to another. Not a huge deal to have a quick sound check on boot. I did find though that the DAC output does not instantly change the pitch, which is not something I found in testing because of course I'm having to press two buttons to get the pitch um, sorted with the original breadboarded desk August version. With how the pocket operator works, the synth sound needs to be selected to affect its trim pot parameters. And that is done when the button is pressed. So what's cool about that is the pocket operator remembers the values of each pot from the last time they were played. They're all kind of stored as like a little uh, value. That also means though, that the button needs to be pressed or activated to then register that the ADC has changed. So you get this chicken egg situation where how do I tell it to change pitch before it sounds, but it won't sound until I press the button. So, you know, you're always kind of gonna be a step behind unless you have a little bit of a delay. So for demos, I added that quick delay when manually playing one voice with a keyboard, and this worked really well. However, and I've run into this before with MIDI projects, when playing multiple voices with a DAW, the delay was unusable. You get a bunch of MIDI notes in the queue and you fall behind. So as a result, I take out the delay and just accept that the 100% synced ADC behavior was not going to happen. And because again, this is supposed to be fun and it's definitely further than just scrolling through notes on a pot. At the end of the day, I'm still getting the DAW to play the pocket operator, which is pretty cool. And it is changing pitch on the synth voices that, you know, have pitch parameters. I also kind of enjoy the randomness of multi-voice with this code. It makes it feel a bit generative because, you know, you're not always 100% sure about which pitch is gonna make it through. Uh, and all pocket operators are in the key of C and they're kind of designed to never sound out of key or weird, everything's kind of made to sound good together. So it doesn't really matter too much what note is being played with this kind of multi-voice input mode here. So, you know, this hack isn't perfect, but I consider it a successful first attempt. 15 out of 16 synth voices, MIDI in, each voice on a separate MIDI channel, and pitch control to a point. It isn't perfect, but I mean, hacks aren't really meant to be. It's kind of inherent in the definition. So the pocket operators were mine and I'm sure many others introduction to desktop synths and dollless music making. What makes them great is that they are limited. They force you to make choices that maybe you otherwise wouldn't. So to build them out like this, you could say kind of defeats the purpose to a point, but I'm preferring to view it as an evolution. Still limited, but with some new tricks up their sleeves. Will I take the hack further? Will I refine it? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, no matter what though, all the files will be up posted. So hey, if you wanna build on this, have at it or even just play along with it as it is. 
But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching and have a good one.